Well, continuing our study of sets, the next topic that we are going to see is known as operations on set. So let us understand what operations can be performed on sets. The first operation that we are going to see is that of complement of a set. And so we will now define what is complement of a set. Well, complement of a set is a set formed by those elements that are present in the universal set, but not in the set that we are taking the complement of. Well, in other words, if we have a set capital A, having the elements 2, 4, 6 and 8, then for this set, suppose we have been given the universal set as containing the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, right up till 10, then we can now find the complement of this set A. Now, complement of any set is given by all the elements that are there in the universal set, but not in that given set. And so complement of A denoted by A dash or A complement like this, consists of all the elements that are there in the universal set, but not in A. Now, 1 is the element present in universal set, but not in A. Likewise, 3 is also present in the universal set, but not in A. And likewise, 5, 7, 9, and finally 10 are the elements that are present in the universal set, but not in the set A. And so we can now define the set A complement as consisting of these elements. So, we have now seen what we mean by complement of a given set. Another important thing to note that if the cardinality of the set A is in this case 4 and the cardinality of the universal set in this case is 10 and so the cardinality of the complement set will now be cardinality of the complement will now be cardinality of universal set minus cardinality of the original set A and so we can now write cardinality of the complement of set A is equal to 10 minus 4 which is equal to 6. And so if you actually count the elements of this set A complement, you will realize that the cardinality of A complement is 6. So there is a general law that relates the cardinality of a complement to the cardinality of the universal set and the cardinality of the set A that we originally started with. And the law, the formula is cardinality of the A complement is equal to cardinality of universal set minus cardinality of the set A. Now this expression is valid so long as the universal set is not an infinite set. And so for cases where the universal set is an infinite set, this does not hold. So now we've seen what we mean by complement of a given set. Well, let us now look at the next operation on sets known as union of sets. Now, union of sets is the set form by taking all the elements out of the two sets and discarding the common elements. So, Union of two sets is formed by taking all the elements of a set A and then we add all the elements of a set B to that set and then we discard the common elements if any. So let us apply that definition to find union of these two sets A and B. Now union of sets is denoted by this symbol here wherein I am now denoting this symbol to mean union of sets A and B. And so union of two sets is given by First, we look at all the elements of set A and include them here. So I will write down all the elements of set A, that is 2, 4, 6 and 8. Next, I will look at all the elements of set B, that is 1, 2, 3 and 6. And then I will notice that some elements are common. So I will now discard the common elements. Firstly, the common elements are 2 and 6. So these elements 2 and 6 are repeated in both these sets. And so I will discard them. That is, I will take only one occurrence of the repeated elements. And so these will be striked out. And so the resulting set that I get will now consist of 2, 4, 6, 8, 1 and 3. Writing this in more orderly fashion, I now get the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 8. And now the set A union B in this case consists of these six elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 8. And that definition is what we are next going to state. So the union of two sets A and B is set to be the set consisting of all the elements that are only in set A and the set consisting of all the elements that are only in set B and the set consisting of all the elements that are in set both sets A and B. Having seen the operation for union of two sets, let us now see the operation for intersection of two sets. We will first study intersection of two sets and then generalize the result to n number of sets. So now intersection of two sets A and B is defined as the set consisting of all the elements that are present in both the sets A and the set B. So only the common elements in set A and B can be included in the intersection of that set A and B. And it is denoted by this symbol 
that is A intersection B. And so whenever this symbol occurs, it means that we are talking about intersection of the two sets. So A intersection B in this case consists of all the elements that are present in both these sets. That is, they have to be repeated in both these sets and only the common elements will be included as A intersection B. Now if you look at the elements of set A, they are 2, 4, 6 and 8 out of which 2 and 6 are repeated in set B. So now the intersection of sets A and B will be only the repeated elements. That is the set consisting of only the repeated elements. And so now we've seen that for these sets A and B, A intersection B will give us the set consisting of these two elements, 2 and 6, which are repeated in both sets. So now we've also seen what we mean by intersection of sets. Well, the next operation on sets that we are going to see is that of difference of sets. So we will first see the difference of these two sets A and B. Well, difference of two sets A and B is denoted by A minus B, where this minus sign denotes the difference of these two sets. And it is defined as the set consisting of all the elements that are present in A but not in B. So we will now enter all the elements that are present in set A but not in set B. So let us identify the elements that are in A but not in B. Realize that 4 is present in set A but is not in set B. Similarly, 8 is present in set A but not in set B. And so we will write A minus B as consisting of these two elements 4 and 8. So in difference of two sets, we take only those elements that are present in the first set but not in the second set. So in this case, we get the difference of sets A and B as containing elements 4 and 8. Now that we have seen difference of two sets, we will study an equally important term or the operation known as symmetric difference of two sets. So let us see what is the symmetric difference of two sets. Well, let us now look at another operation on sets known as symmetric difference of sets. So suppose again we are taking two sets A and B, then the symmetric difference of two sets can be defined as the set consisted consisting of union of sets A minus B and the set B minus A. So the symmetric difference of two sets A and B is defined as the set obtained by union of a minus B and B minus A. So let us see this definition by means of an example. Here we have the set A consisting of these elements and the set B consisting of these and we now have to find the symmetric difference of these sets A and B. Now to find the symmetric difference first we will find A minus B and we know that A minus B is the set formed by containing elements present only in A and not in B and so it consists of elements 4 and 8 because these are the elements present in A and not in B. Likewise, let us now find B minus A. Now by definition of difference of sets, we know that B minus A consists of all elements that are present in B but not in A. And the elements that are present in B but not in A are 1 and 3. And so we have now obtained that B minus A is 1 and 3. That is B minus A set consists of elements 1 and 3. And now by definition of symmetric difference, we can write symmetric difference of two sets A and B is now A minus B union B minus A. So I'm now performing the union of these two sets and so I will replace A minus B by this set that is containing elements 4 and 8 and I will replace this B minus A as the set consisting of elements 1 and 3 and now I will perform the union of these two sets. And now when I perform the union I get 1, 3, 4 and 8 as the final elements in the set that denote the symmetric difference of sets A and B. And the symmetric difference operation is denoted by writing this term between the sets A and B. So whenever we write this symbol between the sets A and B, this denotes that we are writing the symmetric difference of sets A and B. Now from the definition of symmetric difference, you will realize that this is equivalent to writing the symmetric difference of B and A. And so the symmetric difference operator is commutative. What it means is when we perform the symmetric difference of A and B, the result obtained is exactly the same as that obtained when we perform the symmetric difference of B and A. So we have now had a general view of all the five operations on sets that we will perform in our study of sets.